Today, in this video, I'm going to be testing if backdragging dulls your file. I've gotten a lot of comments recently saying that I file wrong. I like to file like this. Cut on the forward stroke, then do a light lift drag on the backstroke. But proper textbook filing looks something like this. As you're pushing forward, the teeth do all the cutting. Then lift the file up off the material and reset for the next cut. With the drag technique, the file never leaves the work. The file gets reset by a lightweight drag motion. But the textbooks say this dragging motion dulls the teeth of the file. So I like to see how much dulling really does happen on the backstroke. This is the machine that I built to test the files. I built this test machine in an earlier video, and it's going to take the place of a human and be able to do thousands of strokes at a time. I'll be able to recreate the lift technique and the drag technique all with this same setup. So let's talk files for a second here. I want to use the best file that I can think of and that I have experience with, and that's these furred machinist files. You get your whole assortment, your round, your half round, your triangle, flat, square. But for this test, we're going to be using the flat file. This is a 10 inch long file. These are extremely good. So what are we actually going to be filing? To do all this testing, I'm going to use these coupons. It's a piece of hot rolled steel, three quarters by three quarters or 19 millimeter by 19 millimeter. And I would like to see how soft this is in comparison to the file. So I'm going to be using the hardness tester and we're going to find out. So let's test out the file on the Rockwell C scale. 67 Rockwell C. And then I know if we put the mild steel in here, yep, it doesn't even register. It registers zero. These numbers are so far off from each other, they're not even measurable on the same scale. Obviously our coupon's way softer, so we are going to see this thing get hogged away. I chose the 1018 mild steel because that was the material that the commenter said was dulling my file. So that's what we're using for this test. It has a threaded hole into the back. This is gonna attach to a cylinder that's gonna push this coupon hopefully right through the file as it tears it apart as it's filing away. I need to regulate the air, and this is what's gonna control the pressure that the cylinder has. So the specs say on the cylinder at like 60 PSI, we're gonna get about 40 to 45 pounds of force. And I want to test this to the extreme. As if you're really filing hard and really possibly dulling the file. So I want a lot of pressure on this to see what would happen. So that's where we're gonna set it at 60 PSI. I have a little tang holder on this side and it just gets flipped in like that. And this little tab holds it into place. And now on the cutting stroke, it gets pushed back into the wedge of the tang. So when this thing pushes, it can't go anywhere. But overall, that's pretty simple. I'm gonna be testing coarse, medium, and fine files. We're gonna be doing the test twice. Each file is gonna have a lift on one side technique, and then we're gonna flip it over and do the drag. Then we're gonna average the results from this coupon giving us our number. What we'll do is we'll measure the length before and then we'll measure the length after. And we'll take the difference, that way we have something to gauge from. Because who knows, maybe this myth is more about how coarse the teeth are and less about a file itself. For this first test, I'm gonna be using this coarse file and it is gonna be the control. I need to put it in the machine and dull it. I don't know how many strokes it's gonna take, but no matter what we get to, it's gonna be the number we're gonna use on every single file. I think we're ready to rock and roll. Everything's set up, dialed in. Our counter is set to zero. Hopefully we see some file dulling. That's what we're looking for. Three, two, one. For the first test, I'm going to try to see how many strokes it actually takes to get the file dull. And I'm using strokes instead of time because it's a much more repeatable measurement. I'm stopping the test right here at 100 strokes because I've noticed that the file is completely plugged up and it is no longer cutting. Imagine that. But I don't want to stop the whole experiment. I would like to flip the file over and then do a drag test because there is a myth floating around out there that back dragging clears the chips. So let's test that to see if it's true. Okay, the switch is out of the way. That won't be causing us any problems. Push this over. That's just gonna stay on the whole time, putting constant pressure on the forward and the back stroke. All right, let the test begin. Three, two, one. We're a few strokes in and I'm already noticing some chips starting to stick to the teeth. 
I'm also noticing that the chips are getting smaller. There's absolutely no way that this file is dull yet. So that only leaves one thing, that the chips are actually blocking the teeth from cutting. All right, stop the test. This isn't working anymore. After 100 strokes, the back drag still is not clearing the file. So right there, that myth is completely busted. This experiment is about file dulling, not about file chip removal. But in order to fix this problem, I'm gonna add a wiper to clear those chips off so that we can continue testing. The toothbrush is gonna remain constant in every experiment, removing the chip buildup as a variable. With the toothbrush installed, let's see how many strokes it actually takes to dull the file. And then off we go. It's almost like this brush was designed to clean teeth. I no longer see any file clogging. This is gonna give us much more consistent results. The rig seems to be working perfect. It has this really nice cadence to it. It's almost musical. I tried to set up the machine to replicate a human filing. And I've timed myself and I ended up around 35 strokes per minute. So I've set up the machine to match my filing speed. Okay, I'm stopping the test here. The chips are really fine, which I'm gonna consider dull. And what I can notice is when I drag my glove across the surface, I can drag it pretty easily. And then on the side that's still sharp, it grips and almost wants to pull my glove right off my finger. We're sitting at 2,500 strokes, which I'm gonna use for every experiment after this. And sheesh, that took an hour and a half to perform one file test. I have 11 more tests to do, a lot of filing, so video montage in three, two, one, go. All right, now that we've done all the tests, let's gather all the coupons up and measure them and see where we ended up. I tested every file twice and we'll be taking the average of the two results. This will help out with any file discrepancies. So I have all the files that we've been testing, but before I look at the results, I wanna sit down under the microscope and look at the individual teeth to actually see if we can really identify if any of these are really truly dull. So let's do some shop analyzation here, which is gonna be quite fun. I'm gonna be comparing the used dull files to a brand new one. This is gonna give me the best chance to see any visual damage that was done to the dull file. The first file tested is the coarse file that was lifted on the backstroke. It removed 782 thousandths of an inch in 2,500 strokes. The first thing that I'm noticing is that the teeth have a flat spot in them. It's pretty hard to detect the flat spot with your naked eye, but if you get the light just right, you can see a reflection off the top of the teeth. At the end of the 2500 strokes, the file was definitely underperforming. And you can see this when we review the high speed footage. Now let's take a look at the back drag on the course file. It averaged 803 thousandths of an inch in 2500 strokes. The dullness of the file almost looks exactly the same as the lift. The teeth have been flattened across the top, and it's really unnoticeable by the naked eye. I also can't find any chipped or missing teeth. 
if we look at the slow motion footage, I can see a very little difference between the two as far as chip size. With that being said, the drag technique did outperform the lift just by a little bit. If I showed you both files back to back, the one that was lifted and the one that was dragged, you'd have a hard time telling which one was which. Let's take a look at the medium file with its much smaller tooth. This is my go-to file for most general filing applications, so I'm really curious to see the results here. With the proper textbook lift stroke, it removed 526 thousandths of an inch. I can definitely see some signs of dulling with that tooth being flattened off the top. But overall, I think the file looks pretty good. This is what I'd expect to see after about 2,500 strokes. Let's take a look at the slow motion footage. This is at the end of the test, and the file is still cutting, just not as well as it used to. But I can't see any damage, missing teeth, the metal isn't sticking to the file, so the toothbrush is doing a good job. Let's move on to the drag on the medium file. It averaged 735 thousandths of an inch. That's crazy. That's right up there with the course file. And once again, outperformed the lift technique. So I wanna see if this extra metal removal comes at a price or damage to the file. I can see no evidence that the file has any more damage than the lift technique. The tooth is still flattened on the top. I see no chipped, damaged teeth. And overall, it's pretty hard to distinguish both of them apart. The slow motion footage reveals something interesting. There's a myth that says back dragging the file clears the chip. But what I'm looking at here shows no evidence of such. You can see that the chips are still clogged inside the file. Even with the brush wiping it, the chips are still there. It took a heavy duty file card to get all the chips out. But even the chips clogging the file, it still outperformed the lift technique. Let's move on to the fine file. The material removed by the lift technique was 462 thousandths of an inch. This file has a tiny tooth and is generally only used for finishing or to try to achieve that perfect surface finish. My first observations are the tooth does have a little bit of a flat spot on the top and randomly there's a chipped tooth here and there. But overall, the file actually looks pretty good. We can see just how dull the file is in the slow motion footage. Those chips are just tiny. I would still call this file dull though. When I rub my finger or my fingernail across it, it just doesn't have the bite like the brand new file does. Let's take a look at the drag method on the fine file. The average coupon measured 558 thousandths of an inch. This again removes more material than the lift technique. So let's see how much dulling happened to the file this time. First observation is this file looks straight up trashed. I see chipped teeth, flattened teeth, and a whole bunch of steel that looks like it's stuck in there. On the file's behalf, I do have a lot of back pressure on the back drag. I would never back drag with this much back pressure, but I do want to simulate what would happen at the extreme limits. It is interesting though to see that even with the damage, it still outperformed the normal lift. When looking at the high speed footage, the file is definitely doing filing things. Chips are coming off, but man, the file just looks horrible. It's hard to argue with the numbers though. Compared to the lift versus the drag technique, the drag still outperforms the lift. Pretty amazing. So where does all this extra material come from? I wanna run one more experiment to find out. So I would like to confirm that it's the backstroke removing material. So I'm gonna throw one more coupon, one more file in the shaper, and we're gonna test it with backstroke only. So in order to back drag only, I could flip the file over and go the opposite direction. Or the easier method is to flip the switch. By flipping the switch backwards, we're going to drag on the backstroke and lift on the forward. This is totally tool crime to put a file in backwards. I almost can't believe I'm doing this. But on a positive note, this rig has almost gone 50,000 strokes without a hiccup. That's truly amazing. Even that little air switch is going like crazy. All righty. That's 2,500 strokes. First impressions, I see a lot of chips. <laughs> There's a lot of filing action going on. I did not notice anything that looked suspicious. First observation of the file is that, you know, it looks used. It still feels sharp, even though it kind of looks like it's been drug across material for 2,500 strokes. But the proof is in the pudding. Let's get the coupon out, get it over to the microscope. We'll measure it and see how it looks. 
So the medium file, drag only, removed 164 thousandths of an inch of material. That's pretty crazy. I see a couple teeth chipped here and there, but nothing too crazy. When I watch the playback of the file cutting, I can actually see chips come off the back, so it is cutting. Can you believe that this thing cut 164 thousandths of an inch going backwards? I think Ferd needs to change their motto. Our files are so good that it cuts backwards. But I'm not gonna stop there. At 2,500 strokes going backwards, we're gonna actually try this thing cutting forwards to see what happens. This is gonna be an interesting experiment. My first observations of this, pulling my finger across the surface, is that it actually feels sharper than the brand new side, which is completely contradictive of what everybody says, but we're gonna find out here in a second. Wow, look at those chips. So after 5,000 strokes, 2,500 of them backwards, we removed 515 thousandths of an inch. And that number falls right in line with the average lift test. So I really don't see a big difference with back dragging. Well guys, I had a lot of fun with this experiment, but it's left me more curious than ever. I know in the future, I would like to test some different materials, maybe even different file brands and see how they compare. But until then, I will see you guys on the next one. Ooh, ooh, ooh.